Hello everybody, I am Dr. Jitendra Pandey and I welcome you again to this lecture series on cyber security. Today we will discuss about smartphone security. Advances in technology now mean that mobile phones can provide services and features similar to desktop or laptop computers. These smartphones offer many new ways to communicate and capture and disseminate media. To provide these new functionalities, the smartphones not only use the mobile network but also connect to the internet either via Wi-Fi connection or via data connections through the mobile network operator. So while you can of course make phone calls with your smartphone, it is better to view smartphones as a small computing devices. This means that whatever we are going to discuss in this lecture is relevant to your use of a smartphone as well as your computer. Learning Objectives After viewing this lecture, the learner shall be able to know how to deal with the risk that come from making sensitive data extremely portable. Explain why mobile voice communication and text messaging are particularly vulnerable to surveillance. Know the steps you can take to improve your security when using your smartphone to communicate, store data, take photos and visit web pages among other activities. Demonstrate how to improve your chances of remaining anonymous if necessary while using a mobile phone. Smartphones usually support a wide range of functionalities including web browsing, email, voice and instant messaging over the internet, capturing, storing and transmitting audio, videos and photos, enabling social networking, multi-user games, banking and many other activities. However, many of these tools and features introduce new security issues or increase existing risks. For instance, some smartphones have built-in geolocation or GPS functionality which means they can provide your precise location to your mobile network operator by default and to many applications you use on your phone such as social networking, mapping, browsing and other applications. As mentioned before, mobile phones already relay your location information to your mobile network operator. However, the additional GPS functionality not only increases the precision of your location information, it also increases the amount of places where this information might be distributed. So it's worth reviewing all the risk associated with your mobile phones. So now let us briefly discuss smartphone security guidelines. We have an intuitive understanding of the value of keeping our purse or wallet safe because so much sensitive information is stored in them and losing them will compromise our privacy and safety. People are less aware of the amount of personal information being carried in their smartphones and consider losing a phone a nuisance rather than a risk. If you also think that a smartphone is a computing device which is always connected to a network and is continuously carried around, it also highlights the important difference between a holder of discrete passive information like a wallet and an active and interactive item like a smartphone. A simple exercise can help illustrate this. Empty the content of your wallet or purse and take account of sensitive items. Typically you may find around 5 pictures of loved ones, identification cards like driver's license, membership cards, Aadhaar card, PAN card etc, insurance and health information, money, around 3 to 4 credit or debit cards and some bills. Now examine the contents of your smartphone. A typical smartphone user may find some of the above in higher quantities and in some cases much more valuable items like around 100 pictures of loved ones, email applications and their passwords, approx 500 emails, about 100 SMS, about 50 videos, social networking applications and their passwords, banking applications with access to the bank accounts, sensitive documents, sensitive communication records, and a live connection to your sensitive information. The more you use smartphones, 
the more you need to become aware of the associated risk and take appropriate precautions. Smartphones are powerful amplifiers and distributor of your personal data. They are designed to provide as much connectivity as possible and to link to social networking services by default. This is because your personal data is valuable information that can be aggregated, searched and sold. It can be disastrous if you lose your phone without having backup of your most important data such as your contacts in a secure location. Beside backing up your data, make sure you also know how to restore the data. Keep a hard copy of the steps you need to take so you can do it quickly in an emergency. We'll start by introducing some smartphone basics, including a description of various platforms and some basic setup procedures for securing your information and communication. It will be followed by specific precautions related to common uses of smartphones. Presently, the most common smartphones in use are Apple's iPhone and Google's Android, followed by Blackberry and Windows phones. The key difference between Android and other operating systems is that Android is mostly an open source system which allows the operating system to be audited independently to verify if it properly protects users' information and communication. It also facilitates development of security applications for this platform. Many security aware programmers develop Android applications with user safety and security in mind. Some of these will be highlighted later in this video. Regardless of what type of smartphone you are using, there are issues that you should be aware of when you use a phone which connects to the internet and comes with features such as GPS or wireless networking capabilities. In this video, we focus on devices with the Android platform because as mentioned above, it's easier to secure data and communications. Nonetheless, basic setup guides and some applications for devices other than Android phones are provided too. BlackBerry phones have been presented as secure messaging and email devices. This is because messages and emails are securely channeled through BlackBerry servers out of the reach of potential eavesdroppers. Unfortunately, more and more governments are demanding access to these communications, citing need for guarding against potential terrorism and organized crime. India, UAE, Saudi Arabia, Indonesia, and Lebanon are examples of governments which have scrutinized the use of BlackBerry devices and demanded access to user data in their countries. Another category of mobiles are often called feature phones. Recently, feature phones have increased their functionalities to include those of some smartphones. But generally, feature phones operating system are less accessible. Therefore, there are limited opportunities for security applications or improvements. We do not specifically address feature phones, although many measures discussed here make sense for features phones too. Smartphones are usually sold, branded or locked. Locking smartphones means that the device can only be operated with one carrier whose SIM card is the only one that will work in the device. Mobile network operators usually brand a phone by installing their own firmware or software. They may also disable some functionalities or add others. Branding is a means for companies to increase revenue by channeling your smartphone use, often also collect data about how you are using the phone or by enabling remote access to your smartphone. For these reasons, we recommend that you buy an unbranded smartphone if you can. A locked phone poses a higher risk since all your data is routed through one carrier which centralizes your data streams and makes it impossible to change SIM cards to disseminate the data over different carriers. Smartphones have many settings which control the security of the device. It is important to pay attention to how your smartphone is set up. There are certain smartphone security settings that are available but not active by default as well as those which are active by default and make your phone vulnerable. Another important consideration is 
installing and updating applications in your smartphone. The usual way to install new software on your smartphone is to use the iPhone App Store or Google Play Store, log in with your user credential and download and install a desired application. By logging in, you associate your uses of the online store with the logged in user account. The owners of the application store keep records of their users browsing history and application choices. The applications which are offered in the official online store are supposed to be verified by store owners like Google or Apple, but in reality, this provides weak protection against what application will do after being installed on your phone. For example, some applications may copy and send out your address book after you install them on your phone. On Android phones, each application needs to request during the installation process itself what it will be permitted to do when it is in use. You should pay close attention to what permissions are requested and if these permissions make sense for the function of the app you are installing. For example, if you are considering a news reader application and you find out that it requires the rights to send your contacts over mobile phone data connection to a third party, you should look for alternative applications with appropriate access and rights. Some users may want to consider these alternative sites to minimize online contact with Google. One of the alternative stories, F-Droid, or which is also known as FreeDroid, which only provides free and open source software applications. However, please remember that you should trust the site before you download any app from it. For inexperienced users, we recommend that you should use Google Play Store. If you don't want to or are unable to go online to access apps, you can transfer apps from someone else's phone by sending .apk files which are also known as Android application package files via Bluetooth. Alternatively, you could download the .apk file to your device micro SD card or use a USB cable to move it from a PC. When you have received the file, simply long tap on the file name and you will be prompted to install it. In order to send or receive any calls or communication to your phone, the signal towers nearest to you are altered by the phone of its presence. As a result of these alerts and communications, the network service provider know the precise geographic location of your mobile phone at any given time. If you are conducting sensitive phone conversations or sending sensitive SMS messages and maintain anonymity, beware of the about tracking features of all mobile phones. Consider adopting the tricks that we are going to discuss now. Make calls from different locations each time and choose locations that are not associated with you. Second technique to maintain anonymity is keep your phone turned off with the battery disconnected, go to the chosen location, switch your mobile on, communicate, switch the phone off and disconnect the battery. Doing this habitually each time you have to make a call will mean that the network cannot track your movements. Another technique, change phones and SIM cards often. Rotate them between friends and secondhand market. Another concern is eavesdropping. Your phone can be set to record and transmit any sounds within the range of its microphone without your knowledge. Some phones can be switched on remotely and brought into action in this way even when they look as though they are switched off. Some tricks to remain safe from eavesdropping are The first one is never let people whom you don't trust get physical access to your phone. This is a common way of installing spying software on your phone. If you are conducting private and important meetings, switch your phone off and disconnect the battery or don't carry the phone with you if you can leave it where it can be absolutely safe. Make sure that any person with whom you communicate also employ the safeguards described here. In addition, don't forget that using a phone in public or in places that you don't trust makes you vulnerable to traditional eavesdropping techniques or 
to having your phone stolen. Typically, encryption of voice communications that travel through the mobile phone network is relatively weak. There are inexpensive techniques which third parties can use to intercept your written communications or to listen to your calls if they are in proximity to the phone and can receive transmissions from it. And of course, mobile phone providers have access to all your voice and text communications. It is currently inexpensive or somewhat technically cumbersome to encrypt phone calls so that even the mobile phone providers can eavesdrop. However, these tools are expected to become cheaper soon. To deploy the encryption, you would first have to install an encryption application on your phone as well as on the device of the person with whom you want to plan to communicate. Then you would use this application to send and receive encrypted calls or messages. Encryption software is currently only supported on a few models of so-called smartphones. Conversations between Skype and mobile phones are not encrypted either, since at some point the signal will move to the mobile network where encryption is not in place. Using internet through your smartphone over mobile data connections or Wi-Fi can provide more secure ways to communicate with people, namely by using VOIP and employing means to secure this channel of communication. Some smartphone tools like a red phone can be even extended some of this security beyond VOIP to mobile phone calls as well. Here we will discuss few tools for communicating securely and their pros and cons. We will start with the familiar one that is Skype. The most popular commercial VOIP application Skype is available for all smartphone platforms and works well if your wireless connectivity is reliable is less reliable on mobile data connection. Skype is a non-open source software what makes it very difficult to independently confirm its level of security. Additionally, Skype is owned by Microsoft which has a commercial interest in knowing when you use Skype and from where. Skype also may allow law enforcement agencies retrospective access to all your communications history. Redphone is a free and open source software application that encrypts voice communication data sent between two devices that run this application. It is easy to install and very easy to use since it integrates itself into your normal dialing and contact scheme. But people you want to talk to also need to install and use Redphone. For ease of use, Redphone uses your mobile phone number as a way to identify you to your contacts. Unfortunately, this makes it more difficult to use red phone without a functioning mobile service plan, even on device capable of using Wi-Fi to connect to the internet. Red phone also uses a central server which puts the administrators of the service in a powerful position by allowing them to see much of your metadata related to your encrypted VOIP calls. Open Secure Telephony Network or OSTN and the server provided by the Guardian project OSTEL.co currently offers one of the most secure means to communicate via voice. Knowing and trusting the entity that operates the server for your VOIP communication needs is an important consideration. When using SIP simple, you never directly communicate with the contact, instead all your data is routed through the hostel server. This makes it much harder to trace your data and find out who you are talking to. Additionally, hostel doesn't retain any of this data except the account data that you need to log in. All your speech is securely encrypted and even your metadata, which is usually very hard to disguise, is blurred since traffic is proxied through the OSTEL.co servers. If you download CSIP Simple from OSTEL.co, it also comes pre-configured for use with OSTEL, which makes it very easy to install and use. Now let us discuss how to send messages securely through your smartphone. 
you should use precautions when sending SMS and using instant messaging or chatting on your smartphones. SMS communications is insecured by default. Anyone with access to a mobile telecommunication network can intercept these messages easily and this is an everyday occurrence in many situations. Don't rely on sending unsecure SMS messages in critical situations. There is also no way of authenticating SMS messages, so it is impossible to know if the contents of the message was changed during delivery or if the sender of the message really is the person they claim to be. Text Secure is a FOSS tool for sending and receiving secure SMS on Android phones. It works both for encrypted and non-encrypted messages, so you can use it as a default SMS application. To exchange encrypted messages, this tool has to be installed by both the sender and the recipient of the message. So you will need to get people you communicate with regularly to use it as well. Text Secure automatically detects when an encrypted message is received from another Text Secure user. It also allows you to send encrypted messages to more than one person. Messages are automatically signed, making it nearly impossible to tamper with the content of the message. Instant messaging and chatting on your phone can produce a lot of information that is at risk of interception. These conversations might be used against you by adversaries at a later date. You should therefore be extremely wary about what you reveal when you are writing on the phone while instant messaging and chatting. Chat Secure is an application that can be used as a secure text chat application for the Android phones. Chat Secure offers easy and strong encryption for your chat with off the record messaging protocol. This encryption provides both authenticity and the independent security of each session so that even if the encryption of one chat session is compromised, other past and future sessions will remain secure. Chat Secure has been designed to work together with Orbo, so your chat messages can be routed through Tor network. This makes it very hard to trace it or even find out that it happened. For iPhones, the Chat Secure client provides the same features, although it is not easy to use it with the Tor network. 